from these linebackers, uh, particularly the the three juniors that have been you know dying to play, uh, that that makes you think that they're that they're ready to take a bigger role this year. Well, uh, the the biggest thing I've been is really really proud of the entire defensive unit, but uh, being with the linebackers more, uh, this is a special group, and uh, I think it starts with the leadership. Uh, when you have uh, Tough Borland and, and Pete Werner and, and uh, Justin Hilliard and Baron Browning as veterans that have played so much football and have, have sacrificed everything you have to be able to play this season, everybody else just follows right along. How, how, uh, how important is it to have that leadership in the linebacker room when, when most of the rest of the defense is trying to replace some key guys? I mean, when you have linebackers like that that you can rotate in and trust, does it make it a little easier to be able to trust the, the other guys that haven't played as much in the secondary and the defensive line? Yeah, Spencer, the thing, the thing, that, um, the thing that that gives you, and it's something that we talked a lot about last year, and I think it's something we had to really um, improve on right from the start last year, is the communication. And when you have a, a linebacking crew that will make the checks and will make sure that people are aligned correctly, now you have a chance to make sure there aren't many big plays or any big plays. And, and they have really taken pride in this. They have really learned how to do that. And I think it's because they've played so much and they have such confidence. And so uh, that's been a real big part. Thank you. Next up, and again, if I could ask, if we could just keep our questions to one and less absolutely necessary, just because we have a lot of people and we don't have a lot of time with Coach. Next up, Mark Snyder from Press Pros with Nathan Baird on deck. Mark? Uh, Coach, uh, with regard to your defensive line uh, leadership group, I'm not talking about your best players, but who's gathering the line, uh, especially with the, having some questions going into the season? I, I couldn't quite get you on that, Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, who is who's your leadership group? Oh, on, okay, I've got you. I've got you. I've got you now. I'm Thanks. Not talking about your best player or anything. I'm talking about somebody who, who takes the group and says, "Okay, this is right. what we, we've got to do." Well, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> the thing you know is uh, when you've got uh, Coach Johnson running that group, they all take pride in leading, but. That group of, of uh, seniors, when you got a young man, or a, he's not a young man anymore, in my opinion, he's a veteran, Jonathan Cooper. I mean, this guy, this guy's been just waiting to play in uh, every snap he takes is a hundred miles an hour. And Tyreek Smith is the same way. And uh, you go right down the line, Tyler Friday. Uh, I mean, I don't want to talk to Zach Harrison. Everybody I could talk to you about in that front is so excited and so into this season. And uh, it's really a group, that's just the ends. It's a really good group of, of uh, young athletes. And then you got uh, Tommy and Antoine and, uh, and, and Jonathan Cage, that, that, that whole group, you know, uh, Haskell. I mean, they all have been with Coach Johnson for a long time now, and uh, they really have taken charge. Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Tim May on deck. Nathan? Hey, Greg. Last year, Nebraska was moving Wandale Robinson around a lot. You had to worry about him from the backfield as well as the receiver. It sounds like he's focusing more receiver this year. Just what ways is he going to challenge these new guys that you have in the secondary? And what do you guys have to do well to kind of neutralize him? Well, well Nathan, we, we – we're really well aware of that. And, and you never know in an opening game what somebody's going to do. So you really want to make sure you try to cover every base. And, uh, but the fact that, that they did that a lot last year with him and they did a lot of things throughout the season with him, we have really tried uh, to make sure we covered every base and, and really had a lot of uh, walkthroughs with it, a lot, of, a lot of different periods of practice to make sure we, uh, we were in charge of all those, those different things. And so they've, they've all right on top of it. Next up, Tim May from the Tim May podcast and Letterman Row and Brendan Gulick on deck. Tim? Thank you very much, Jerry. Just one quick and in my real question. How close is Haskell Garrett to being able to play? Is he ready to play? Well, I think that is, that's day to day, you know, but uh, we are really, really uh, hoping and uh, I, we never know that's, that's not our decision, but he's, I just know this, he is in every meeting, 
He is in every walkthrough. He is doing everything that a guy would do if he was if he was hoping to be able to play. But I can't tell you that right now. Greg, you got a lot of new faces out there starting. Obviously, there you know uh, uh, optimism is high that these guys are very talented players, et cetera. But but so many guys on that defensive side starting their first games, becoming full time type players. I don't know what does that leave you from a trepidation standpoint. How would you describe your sort of your thoughts going into this opener? against a team that's pretty creative offensively. Well, yeah, I mean, we all understand that an opener is always a great challenge and they're a very, very good football team. There's no question about that. Uh, all I can go by is what our players have done, what they do every day, how they have, they have taken care of this uh, and fought against this, this COVID and what they've done to make sure they could play in this game. And so, you know, I'm very optimistic because when you get a team of young men that sacrifice and work like they have, then that's a special group. And uh, we're looking for great things from them. Thanks, man. Next up, Brendan Gulick from Buckeyes Now on Sports Illustrated with Austin Ward on deck. Brendan? Hey, Coach, it sounds like we're going to have a chance to talk with Tuff Borland here in, in a couple of minutes. And I want to ask you about him. What is most impressive about Tuff? whether it's off the field, on the field, leadership, whatever it is, what stands out to you most when you hear his name? Well, I've been very fortunate to have over the years uh, been involved with some pretty, pretty good uh, linebackers. And uh, I, the thing I've noticed about Tuff uh, this year, he is a totally different linebacker in my opinion than last year. Uh, he's faster, he's quicker, he's stronger. Uh, and he is so much more vocal because I believe he is so confident. And uh, he reminds me of the, of the guys you had in the NFL where they're going to say, hey, uh, the ball is coming here. You know, this is where we should be. You know, and when things don't go exactly like you want, he comes off the field and he goes right to the coach and says, coach, this is what's happening. What, what do you think we should do? And, and you got that kind of confidence where, I mean, you have a true, true leader in, in him. And, and uh, I think the sky's the limit for him. Next up, Austin Ward with Letterman Rowe and Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Austin? Hey, Greg. How are you uh, doing? Good. Seems like, you know, Barron could do pretty much anything you asked him at, at any linebacker spot. When you're trying to think up ways to use him, how fun is that for a coach to – you know, you, you can come up with just about anything you could dream of for Baron. it seems like. Well, that, that makes your job a lot easier. But the thing that's really, really uh, interesting in that whole situation is uh, he's taken unbelievable pride in trying to be the best Sam linebacker he can be first. You know, you'd get some young men that they love all the different things that maybe people talk about them being able to do. And then when it comes to that time to play regular defense, it's just okay. He comes in every day. In fact, he'll be in today again. He comes in every single day. He'll bring his food in and sit in my room and watch the tape and go over every little thing. And uh, I mean, his attitude and where he is is, uh, is remarkable. Thanks, Greg. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz with the dispatch and Tony Gerdman on deck. Bill? Hi, Greg. Uh, you are adjusting again to a different defensive coordinator working with Kerry Combs, who's come back. Um, what has that transition been like? How do you think the defense might look a little different with him running it? Well, I mean, the thing about it is, uh, you know, he, he brings us uh, uh, some different, some different uh, d uh, ways of playing defense, but we still have our defense. We still do what Ohio State does. And, uh, you know, I think uh, – the, the fact that all of our staff work so closely together and we're all in this thing together, you know, I think it's been a really good transition. Thank you. Next up, Tony Gerdman with Buckeye Scoop and Patrick Murphy on deck. Tony? Hey, uh, what's going to be the game day setup? Are you going to be upstairs? Like, um, who's going to be upstairs? Who's going to be on the sideline? No, I'm going to be upstairs. I'm going to be upstairs. And it's going to be interesting because I think the last time I was upstairs was in 1990 when I was at Texas A&M. So uh, I'm going to be upstairs, but uh, I, I've been there during the practices that we had. It's been, uh, it's been great. So, you know, it'll work really well with our staff. Next up, Patrick Murphy from 24-7 Sports with Dan Hope on deck. Patrick? 
Greg, last year you guys came in and you had a motivated defense because it came off a year where they were disappointed in their performance. This year you guys come off a, a year where you were very good. How do you keep that, that chip on the shoulder motivation from this group this season? Well, by, by always emphasizing the little things, the, the things that, that make a great defense are number one, stop the run. And, and, and number two, don't give up big plays. And the way you do that is by everybody running to the football and everybody playing as hard as you can and not having missed assignments. And uh, they've taken great pride in that. And our coaches have done a great job of, of making sure that happened. Thank you. Next up, Dan Hope with 11 Warriors. Dan? Hi, Greg. What exactly is the dynamic between you and Kerry in terms of him coming in and being the defensive coordinator and you being the co-defensive coordinator? Well, you, you know, what happens when, when you have uh, a great coaching staff, you know, I think everybody has an input. And again, like I said, Kerry has done such a great job in, uh, of bringing in, you know, his, some of the things that he's been through over the years, his, uh, uh, his demeanor, everything like that. And then with our coaching staff, all of us working together, it's been great. And, you know, the thing that I think has made this group special, uh, there are no egos. And uh, I mean, it doesn't matter who runs what, and who does what. The bottom line is let's play great defense. And if we play great defense, Ohio State will have another great year. And that's always been my belief. And, uh, my, and I know that's the way everybody else is on, on this staff. Is there like a specific part of a defense that you focus on versus what Kerry focuses on? Yeah, I think uh, the the front seven, you know, the run game is what I've always uh, been a lot stronger at than the back end. And uh, Kerry has always been a back end guy. So, uh, you know, and then we have Larry Johnson and then we got Al Washington and, and – uh, you got uh, Matt Barnes. You you got a bunch of guys that have, you know, Matt's been a back end guy, you know, and uh, so we've got it, enough guys to be able to make sure both both work together, and that only works when everybody knows that this is for for the team, this is for the players. It's not about it's not about you as a coach. That's never been the case. Thanks, Greg. We have time for just a couple more. If anybody wants to ask a question, uh, go ahead. I'm going to just open it up a little Jeopardy round there. Who's ever first and wants to ask another question, if anybody does. Hey, uh, Greg, this is Tim May again. How much are you, uh, are, you, are you guys missing Jordan Fuller at this moment from the standpoint of a leadership uh, uh, standpoint of back there in the back end, getting everybody lined up? And who's sort of filling that role for you from what you can see? Tim, ask me that question Saturday around 4 o'clock. You know, okay. Uh, I know one thing we miss him and it wouldn't matter if we had uh, 11 guys like him, you're always going to miss him. He's a great person. And a, he showed that he was a great player here and he's showing it right now. He's a great player there, but uh, don't know that. I, like I said before, I, you know, I've really been proud of the guys back there and uh, uh, the hookers and the proctors and those guys in the middle have, have done a really good job. And uh, again, you won't know until after that game's over. Thanks, man. Go ahead. Steven Means with Cleveland.com. Pete Warner was so good in that Sam linebacker role for you guys. And with his move to Will, um, how does that maybe – I know you talked about Barron, but also open up things maybe for other linebackers or even maybe some safety that if you guys wanted to go multiple. How does that open things up for you guys? Uh, Steven, uh, uh, Pete's done a phenomenal job. And I'm going to tell you what, the reason – the reason we moved him inside is, and we've done this before with other guys that ended up making it in the NFL because of that is that when sometimes when you play a Sam linebacker and just a Sam linebacker, they can run away from you and they can, they can get you on one side and have everything going the other way. And, and we felt Pete was too valuable and Pete was too good of a football player. Not that the Sam isn't a good player, but this guy is special. And so we said, hey, toughen him inside together. Now they're both going to the football. Both of them run so well. Both of them are so intelligent. And uh, it's been a really good move for us. Anybody else? Any more questions? Bill Rabinowitz? Yeah, just great. I'm just curious. Are there younger guys uh, trying to break through that have really caught you, you and the coaching staff's eye? Excuse me? Yeah, are there younger guys that, uh, you know, reserves, guys who are, who are making a push to, to get oh. significant playing time? Well, I'll tell you two guys that I'm going to say right now that are really, really showing up and they do it, uh, it seems like every day is uh, 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 Cody Simon uh, and, uh, 
uh, Mitchell. Uh, they both really have looked good at backers. They're going to be, I think they're going to be special linebackers as they come. The, the, the other, the younger ones, you know, in the, in the secondary, uh, it's hard to see them, you know, at first because they're going to really probably be a special teams at first until they find their way in. But uh, these two linebackers, because I'm with them a lot, have really, really showed up. And I think you people are really going to like what you see in them. Thanks. Have time for maybe one or two more. Mark Snyder from Press Pros. Go ahead. You're on mute, Mark. Coach, you mentioned about being in the press box. Uh, that that would, after 30 years, that would seem to be like an immense adjustment, especially if you like to really interact with the players and, and get emotional. I mean, have you had to get pointers from other coaches about what it's like again? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the part about the part about uh, interaction with the players and in uh, that part of it has always been something I've really, really enjoyed. But you know what happens when we have a whole staff of guys that do that, sometimes too many doing that isn't good. And uh, I just felt the best thing for us was for me to be in the box. Uh, I think I can help this defense more being there. And, uh, and we've got plenty of guys down down there that are that are enthusiastic and are are with their guys. We have time for one final question. This is going to come from Bill Landis from the Athletic. Bill, hey Greg, um, since you're not playing Pete at Sam and you kind of lose his coverage abilities, I guess, do you anticipate subbing the Sam out more this year than you guys did last year, just because you don't have that cover guy there like Pete? Well, I'm not, Bill, I, I, I'm not sure we don't have that cover guy, you know, and that's the thing, uh, watching in practice and doing the things we've done with it. Uh, uh, Justin Hilliard has done a great job. Baron Browning has done a phenomenal job. They both have been super. So uh, I'm not worried about that right now. You know, I think they really understand it. They've really bought in and are very intelligent. Uh, and I, I think they'll be able to do the same thing. We, we got time for one more too. Timmy, Tim Hall from uh, WBNS 97.1. I did see you. So uh, go ahead. You'll finish it up. Thanks, Jerry. Greg, I was wondering who among the defensive linemen right now, are you really excited to see on Saturday? Who's been practicing well here in the last week or two? All of them. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, it, that group, every day they come out, every day they go as hard as they can go. Every day, I will sit in there, having been with the defensive line at other places for a long time, I will come in and watch the tape and I'll go, wow, wow, you know, and so, you know, for me to name names right now, I, I probably wouldn't do some of them justice, and, and I think you're going to see, uh, this is a group that has a lot to prove, we lost some great players there, uh, and they believe they're great players, and that's the beauty of being able to play a game.